the Lord want to speak to you on today. You have to receive what God is saying. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30, those three key scriptures. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 and 30. Is that Brother Flint back there? Yes, Praise God, man of God. Thank God for having you in the house of God. And Sister Eric and those beautiful little babies, they get bigger. Amen. And causing more trouble. Yes, Lord. <laughs> we thank God and we give them praise. Amen. Yes, Lord. Minister Herman, God have been good to you. Amen. You on God's heart. Amen. We have Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 and 30. Would you please say, Amen. Amen. Come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. I want you to say this with some emotion and passion. Say, come to me. Come to me. Look at your neighbor and say, come to me. Come to me. One more time, say neighbor. To me. to me. And I say, Jesus, Jesus said, come, come to, me. to me. Saints of God, the invitation is given that the Lord is already calling us to come to him. Many are called, but few are chosen. And the reason why I come few are chosen is because few refuse to accept the call. God is calling us, saints of God, when Jesus gave a prayer about the supper. When the Lord was calling all to the supper, yes. the Bible said that each one of them began to make excuses yes. and said why they couldn't come to the Lord's supper. And saints of God, even right now today in the land when God is calling us unto him, people begin to make excuses yes. and say how come they cannot come? But God still is putting out the call for you to come. Yes. Now saints of God, I don't care what you're dealing with on this morning. I don't care what you were dealing with last night. I don't care what's going on in your family right now, what's going on in your body, what's going on with the children. Jesus said, if you want rest, the only thing you got to do is just come. Yeah. Now, saints of God, I know you said, well, what you talking about, man? Oh, God, I'm already serving God. What you mean come to Jesus? Sometimes we can be serving Jesus, but we have not fully really come to him. Because he said, I will keep you in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on me. And when we serve God, we keep our mind on God and not on the problem and not on the circumstances. Do you hear me say, God? He said, cast all your care upon me. Yeah. He said, because I care for you. And sometimes, says God, we don't cast all our care upon God. We give God a little bit, but we keep it just a little bit for ourselves. Do you hear me say, God? Because some of us have grown accustomed to constantly worrying. And some of us don't feel right unless we are worried about something. Come on, say to God. We will tell nobody about it, but sometimes we are not comfortable unless we snatch something back from Jesus that we already gave to him. We come to the altar of the house of God and we give certain things unto God. Only before we leave out the door to snatch them back. And sometimes when we have given certain things to God, we leave the house of God and go home, but the enemy coming right back and put that burden right back on you all over again. But saints of God, when you give it to God, you got to leave it there. Jesus said, which one of you by worrying can add one cubit to your stature? He said, can you get any taller by worrying? And he said, which one of you by worrying can turn one hair on your head right? He says, you can't do the least. He said, why are you concerned about the rest? He said, so do not worry. That was not a statement. That was a command. Do you hear me say, God? Now, thou should not steal. God said, thou should not steal. That's a commandment. Thou should not Thou should not lie. God said, thou should not lie. That's a commandment. God said, don't have no other God before him. You said, that's a commandment. But what about when God said, so do not worry? We don't look at that as being a commandment. We look at that as being a statement. But Jesus said, I'm not making a statement. He said, I'm 
not giving you a commandment for you not to live. I have not given you the spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. Jesus said, if, if your mind is worried and your mind is perplexed, he said, guess what? It didn't come from me. He said, well, I have not given you the spirit of fear, but a power. I got given with power. Do you think it's such a power? A power of love and of a sound mind. I got a sound mind. I don't care what's going on around me. I got a sound mind. Have I given unto you? He said, Not as the world gives it, but as I give it. He said, Peace will surpass it, all understanding. He told the apostles, I'll leave unto you peace. He gave it to you, but you have to be able to receive it. And walk in it. Do you even say something? From this day forward, I walk in the peace of God. Do you even say something? From this day forward, I cast all my care upon God. Do you even say something? From this day forward, I don't walk in fear anymore. Because he's giving me a sound mind. mind. And Jesus is saying here in the text, like he's telling many of you today, you say, I'm already serving God. But Jesus still saying, Come! You say, Man of God, why did you shout there like that? What's wrong with you? We can hear what you're saying. But when you look at this word, come up here in the Greek, it's a exclamatory word. Now to those of us who are smarter than the fifth grader, we understand that it's an exclamatory word. <laughs> it's a word or a sentence that's full of passion. Yeah. So when Jesus said, come, he didn't just say, come to me. Mm -hmm. He made a cry. He said, come to me. Yeah. Say some God, it was a heartbreaking cry. He said, come to me. Yeah. When you are body and you are heavy land. He said, come to me. When you are afraid and you don't know what to do. He said, Now, God said, now is the day of salvation. He said, come to me now. God is making the call. But when God makes the call, do we come? And God don't make no passive call. But when God said, come, God said, come. Yes, yes, Lord. Unto me. Sometimes we go to the wrong people. And sometimes 
how we go to the wrong things. He said, come to me. But we're going to eight ball. We're going to Tough Willie. We're going to Earth and Jerk. We go to Cavassier. We go to that man or that woman, but we don't come to Jesus. Yeah. But Jesus said, you got to know who to come to. Yeah. Thanks to God, this is very important in your life. You got to know who to come to. You got to know where to go when you're weary and when you're tired and you're looking free. He said, come to me. Yeah. Oh, my God. Come to me. You got to know who you're coming to. And when Jesus said, come to me, he said, a mouthful. He said, come to me, Jesus. Come to me, the Son of God. Come to me, the lily of the valley. Uh -huh. Come to me, the true vine. He said, I am the true vine. He said, you are the branches. He said, you can't do nothing without me. Saints of God, when he said, come to me, he was saying, come to the true vine. Yeah. He even said, God. He said, come to the bright and morning star. Yeah. And saints of God, something about the bright and morning star. Mm -hmm. When sailors was on the boat, yes. and it was night, the way that they knew their direction, in the morning time when they seen that bright morning star. Yes. They knew which direction to go when they seen the bright morning star. Jesus said, come to me, for I am the bright morning star. Which means I give you direction and I give you guidance. Say so God, when you don't know which direction to go, and you don't got no guidance in life, because when you don't got Jesus, you don't got no guidance, and you don't got no direction. Yes. But he said, come to me, for I am the bright morning star. He said, come to me, for I am the good shepherd. Uh -huh. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. Uh -huh. He said, he leads me to green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul for his name's sake. Saints of God, you need the good shepherd. You need Jesus to lead you to green pastures. You need Jesus to lead you beside the still waters. Yes, yes. Not water just running, but water. Yes. Yes. Because you need steel water. water. You need the peace of God. The Lord is my shepherd. His rod and his staff, they come for me, which is the word of God. Because this is what comes for me, the word of God. He said, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Because when you call the good shepherd, yes. Mercy will follow you. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. He said, Come to me. Come to me. Yes, the good shepherd. Yes. The resurrection. Uh -huh. Lord, Hallelujah. our brother is dead. He's been dead four days. Come on. And it's stink inside of there. He said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? Yes. They said, Lord, we know our brother going to rise up again at the last day. Uh -huh. At the resurrection. Yes. He said, I am the resurrection. We hear him say, God, I don't care what bad situation you're dealing with. If you come to Jesus and call out to Jesus, he'll make a dead situation come back to life. We hear him say, God, he said, come to me. I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. He said, I am the good shepherd. He said, I am the rock. Oh my God. Say to God, when you stand in that sand and it seems like you're seeking to say to God, you need to put your feet on the rock. You said Jesus Christ in the house. The house won't go down. Come on now. When the house is standing on the rock. Come on. I don't care how shaky it seems. And I don't care what kind of winds come your way. Come if your house is built on Jesus yeah. and your house is built on the Lord of God, the enemy can't take your house down. I am the rock. I am the rock. I am the captain of your salvation. Yes. You didn't save yourself no way. You didn't deliver yourself no way. You didn't redeem yourself no way. But Jesus said, I am the captain of your salvation. Come to me. Yes. He said, I am the author and finisher of your faith. Yes. Peter, I pray for you. Uh -huh. The enemy want to shoot you like we. He said, but I pray that your faith don't fail. Saints of God, some of you the devil have grabbed you and grab your marriage and grab your home and he trying to shift you like weak. Some of you in there grab your mind and grab your heart and he's trying to shift you like weak. But Jesus told Peter, I pray for you. Yes. That your faith don't fail. That your faith don't fail. He said, now let me tell you beforehand, you're gonna fall. Oh yeah. He said you're gonna deny me three times. Yes. 
But he said, I didn't pray that you didn't fall. I pray that your faith don't fail. Because saints of God, it don't matter even if you fall, as long as your faith don't fail. As long as your faith is Jesus. I've been worried about this thing for no reason. 
I've been stressing about this thing for no reason. I've been letting the enemy run me in the ground all week, all month, all year for no reason. I've been feeling depression, stressed out for no reason. I've been in darkness and confusion for no reason. And the only thing I have to do is just come to Jesus. If I come to Jesus, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, God will make a way. Come to me. All you that labor. Labor means I grow weary. Because I'm laboring. My God. Labor means to be exhausted. Yes. Labor means to keep trying but be exhausted. I'm going to talk to some of you saints of God because I know you ain't going to talk to the preacher. Come on. Because you don't want the preacher to know that's what I'm dealing with. It's all right because I speak from the Spirit of God and I'll be down your road after a while. You hear me say, see God? He said, Come to me, all ye that labor. I'm talking about those who are exhausted. You are exhausted. You are tired of your spirit. Not only are you tired of your spirit, but now you have got tired of your body. You have got tired of your spirit. You are depleted of energy. You don't have no more strength. You say, I can't go no another step. Why? He said, Come to me, all you. Get all exhausted. Yes, Lord. Just, just tired. Just, 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 just tired of it. And ain't nobody gonna understand what you're going through because you're by yourself in a room, and in your heart you're by yourself. You got people around you, but they don't know that you're tired. They don't know that you're about to get ready to give up and throw in the towel. They don't know that you're finna let out a scream that'll make everybody in the room take off running. You know why? Because they don't understand what you're going through in your spirit. Mentally, you're tired. And in your spirit, you are tired. You say, I'm just, I'm just tired of trying. Some of you, the enemy is coming to you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Some of you, the enemy comes to you and he's whispering to you and tell you should go ahead and kill yourself. Won't you go ahead and commit suicide? There ain't no reason for you to keep on living. Huh? When you find yourself in your room, huh? the devil is talking to you. Huh? Won't you go ahead and put a needle in your arm and go ahead and only go ahead and blow your brain? And you ain't no good either way, sir. Don't nobody care about you. And since God, sometimes you just tired. Sir. You've been laboring trying to do it. Sir. You've been laboring trying to make it happen. Sir. You've been laboring trying to make the marriage happen. Sir. You've been laboring, sir. laboring to try to make the family work. Sir. You've been laboring to try to get them all of the people. Sir. We don't care nothing about you. Sir. You've been laboring. You're walking around, but in your spirit, you've already given up. Because God, I'm just tired of trying. And it's like every time I try, things go wrong. Every time I put forth some effort, things go wrong. Every time I try to work it out, 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 it fails. You said that's the problem. You've been trying to work it out. You said, but you're gonna come to Jesus and let me work it out. We didn't even say to God. Why are you trying to figure it out? God have already worked it out. And people around you don't know that you are tired. The husband come in her house from work. The wife is waiting for him to get in. Baby, I fixed your favorite dish. Baby, I got your bath water in. And how was your day? And he walked past her because secretly in his heart, he's tired. And she don't even know that he's about to give up. The wife is through fixing food for everybody, fixing the place for everybody. Got little Johnny his plate. Little Susan her plate. Got my husband his plate. And I did all the laundry. Everybody in the house is happy because it's clean. Our food is on the table. And everybody think mama is all right. But they don't know that mama is tired. Oh my God. When you are exhausted. Exhausted me that you can't even hardly move anymore. And some of us have got to the place in the spirit we can't even move anymore. It means to be depleted with nothing left. You say, I just don't got nothing left. I'm fatigued. I don't got anything else in me. I'm tired of trying. I don't even know what to do about the situation. I'm tired of the marriage. I'm tired of what they're doing on the job. I'm tired of the business. I'm tired of ministry. I'm just tired. And sometimes when you get tired in one area, the devil will try to make you tired in every other area. 
is spilled over into other areas. You're really tired with the marriage, but it's spilling over in ministry. It's spilling over into the, the, the family. It's spilling over into your job, into your being. You know why? Because I'm tired. I'm exhausted. And don't nobody know about it. God, why do you got a wife around me and she don't even know I'm exhausted? How do you got a husband around me and they don't even know that I'm exhausted? How do you got children around me and they don't know that I'm exhausted? How do you got family around me and they don't even know that I'm exhausted? I'm exhausted. And I'm laboring. Yes. I try to make this thing work. Laboring with my own strength, own wisdom, own spirit, man. And I'm laboring. But he said, all you did labor. They travel your own. They try to do without your own strength. He said, stop doing it out of your strength and do it out of my strength. Oh my God. Jesus said you can do all things to Christ Jesus with strength as you. You may can't do it in your strength, but you can do it in the strength of God. You may can't do it in your wisdom, but you can do it in the wisdom of God. You may can't do it through your power, but you can do it through the power of God. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Come to me. All you did, labor. Personal issues. Don't nobody know about it. Dr. gave you a report. Don't nobody know about it. You've been laboring with that for so long. Laboring with addictions and strongholds. And God, I'm trying to break out. And I want to stop doing this. I don't want to go to a, the club again, God. But I find myself going back again. God, I don't want to drink that. But God, I find myself going back to the bottle again. God, I don't want to be mean like that to my family, but I find myself being mean all over again. And I've been laboring, trying to stop it on my own. I've been laboring, trying to put it down on my own. I've been laboring, trying to get myself right on my own. Yeah. But Jesus said the problem here is that you're trying to do it out your own strength. Yeah. He said, come to me. Yes, yeah. yes, Lord. All ye that labor, trying to keep the law. Trying to keep all of the commandments. Come on. Trying to keep all of the word. God, I'm trying to live right, but it seems like I keep failing in certain areas. He said, come to me. Come because you're saved by grace through faith and the blood of Jesus covers you. As long as you put forth some effort, yes. the blood of Jesus covers you. And sometimes we labor. Sometimes we are exhausted. On the praise team dancing, but we are exhausted. Preaching, but exhausted. Singing, but exhausted. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes. Over hospitality, but we're exhausted. Ushering, but we're exhausted. On the deacon board, but we're exhausted. A pastor, but you're exhausted. A mother of the church, but you're exhausted. Come on, say something. Sometimes we're exhausted. We can't tell nobody about it. We can't tell my name on the shoulder and say anything. But God said, I know you yet. I know you're rising up and you're sitting down. I know you're from afar. I'm giving you strength. Come on, say something. Come to me. Come to me. All you did labor in our heavy lead, which means burden. Yes. Burden means there in the Greek, which means I load. I load. Come to me who got the metal. Come to me, all you who got the mentality of I load. Ain't nobody else putting the burdens on you. You put them on yourself. Yes. You'll see some of us all through the years we have loaded ourselves oh. with all kind of stuff. Oh, what they think about me? And who left me? Who betrayed me? Who rejected me? We don't know what I sell for our church. Rejection. They rejected me. We don't know what I sell with so much stuff that now we're way down. We barely can move in the spirit. We got so much on our hands and so much on our chest. We go to work how you know what the day sees, but we are burning down. We didn't even say to God. We got a lot of rolls on our chest. Speaking in tongues, but I got a lot of load yes. on my chest. Yes, Lord. Just got healed physically, but mentally did nothing happen. I got a load on my chest. Yes. And I need God to speak to the loads that's on my chest. I got to be truthful that some loads I put there myself. Yes, some loads, I, I'm concerned about what people think about me. That's a load. Come on. Do you hear me such God? It's a load that they reject me. The first husband left me. The first wife left me. Was it me? Mm. Was there something wrong with me? Was it because I wasn't good enough? Was that man good enough? Was that woman good enough? Did they have something I didn't have? And when the marriage is over, we put all these burdens on ourselves. And when the next man step in, or the next woman step 
men. We chase them away. You know why? Because I'm carrying loads. Come to me. You who put loads on yourself. Enduring friendship with anybody. It's like you're always getting into it with people. What's wrong with you? We have these conversations in a mirror and we don't tell anybody about it. And the children come in and say, Mama, Daddy, who are you talking to? Get up out of here. You know why? Because you have a conversation with yourself. They don't know what's going on. They don't know that Mama is exhausted. That Mama is laboring. She's laboring. She got burdens on her. She's having a talk with herself instead of having a talk with Jesus. It took years of abuse, years of neglectation, years of reject, years of hurt, years of them talking about me, years of my own family turning their back on me, years of broken relationships, and I've been carrying a whole these burdens. Years I lost that job, and God, why don't you let me lose that job? I was at work every day. I was on time every day, and you let them all these burdens come to me. Oh, you are burdened. Way down. Way down. Oh my God. You walk funny because you're burning. My God. People say, why do you walk like that? <laughs> why do you live like that? Because saints of God, when I say walk, when I talk about physical walking, I'm talking about your walking life. Yeah. People say, why, 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 why are you doing it, man? You can't give up that pornography. But you don't know that that man is burning. And you don't know that he's exhausted. Yeah. And he's trying to find a way out. Be him and say, God, because he's burning. And before we start judging people about the sins that they live in, first of all, we have to find out the reason. Huh? If you go down to the root of the problem huh? and pull up the root, huh? and with the sin problem, huh? you need to say, God. Huh? But Jesus said, Come to me. Yes, Lord. Burning. Yes. I'm learning more and more now. Mm. God, show me what these people need. Yes, and show me what the problem is. So I can minister to the problem, God. If they weary and if they are burning, God, what do I tell them? He said, if they burning and they weary, tell them, come to me. You coming to church, but you ain't coming to Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, my God. You came to crack practice, but you didn't come to Jesus. You came to the prayer meeting, but you didn't come to Jesus. And Jesus, you got to come to the altar. You ain't give it to me. You got to put it on the altar. just walking around really like a hollow shell. There's nothing left in me. Come to me, all you that labor in our heavy land. Yes. Burden means to have cargo. Because mm -hmm. you carry cargo. Cargo, come to a close. Got to give you what God gave me. Yes. Heavy land means to carry cargo. Cargo is the luggage that you carry. You said, she got some junk in her trunk. You're right. She got some junk in her trunk. <laughs> you see the physical junk. Yes. But you ain't seeing the mental and emotional and spiritual junk. Yes. And you get with her and you say, I got to have her because she got some junk in her trunk. Mm -hmm. And then you get her, she get to slice in your tire, pour periods on your clothes, mm -hmm. cushion you out, and go crazy. Mm -hmm. And you'll stop at your house. i stop looking at your window, what you doing. You know why? Because you get the rejection issue. You got some junk in her trunk. But she come with a whole lot of junk. 
Yeah, she got a big behind. But she also got a big behind, which means you better look behind her. You hear me say, Scott? Because she walked in the bed with some stuff. All oh, that man got some junk in the truck. Yes. <laughs> Y'all sitting down eating, having a good time. Don't walk over there with water puddle. Come here, scoop you up. <laughs> over the water puddle with you. Take my coat, it's raining. Mm -hmm. Come on, you feel so protected. <laughs> it's not if a man trying to be fake. It's that he have a lot of cargo. And there's a lot of burdens in his life. And you don't know anything about it. The next thing you know, he's slapping you around. Open the door for yourself. What's wrong with you? You got hands and feet. What happened? You know why? Because you came with some junk in the trunk. And you didn't know that he or she had some junk in the trunk. And until you deal with the cargo, until you deal with the junk in the trunk, yeah. guess what? You'll keep being burdened. You'll keep being exhausted. Yes, yes, Lord. Me and my wife had to open the trunk. <laughs> Throw that out. <laughs> Throw that out. <laughs> Throw that out. <laughs> What the boys told me in the locker room, I had to throw that out. What the ladies told you at the bachelorette party, you had to throw all that out. You had to say, God, you had to come to God and get into the word of God. And burn it be A lot of us have a lot of junk in our trunk when we go into the, the marriage. And then you get 10 years down the road and find out it's something I forgot to throw out the trunk. Yeah. And you got to go back to the trunk and throw that out. Because God will keep showing you. Because God wants the trunk to be empty so you can be light. Yes, so you can praise Him. So you can worship Him. So you can magnify Him. So you can get along with your husband. You can get along with your wife. You can say, God, but come to me. Oh, you did all. Laboring. Mm. In the land. He said, come to me and I will give you rest. Rest means cessation. Which means the ending of a condition or the stopping of our activity. My God. He said, come to me and that condition is going to stop. You hear the sense God. You say, God is ever going to stop. You say, God is my mind, mental problem ever going to stop. You say, God is my emotional problem ever going to stop. But God said, come to me and I'm going to cut off the activity. Yeah. I'm going to stop the condition. You hear the sense God. Yeah. Come to me. And I'm going to give you this. Oh my God. That condition that I had in my spirit, saints of God, a long time ago, when I came to Jesus, he stopped the condition. My God. He stopped the condition that I stopped drinking myself to death and smoking myself to death because he stopped the condition. Do you know say I stopped inflicting harm on myself? You know why? Because Jesus stopped the condition. You need Jesus to step in so he can diagnose and stop the condition. Do you even say, God, come to me. I'm going to stop the condition. The condition is right now today. Yes. When you give it to Jesus, it is right now today. Yes. You've got to have some expectation. You've got to have some faith that it is today. You give it to God. I'm not going to go through my whole life worrying, being depressed, being stressed, being fearful, being uncertain. Yes. But it is today. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. You're going to keep the devil out. Yes, yes, Lord. Rest. If he's spoken, he's going to make you good. Rest means to re be refreshed. Which means to regain your strength. Yes. Some of you need to get ready to regain your strength. You lost enough strength along the way, but get ready to regain your strength. Yes. You say, I lost my strength, lost my ability. I lost my self-esteem. I lost my self-esteem in the last stage. You didn't even sense God. Yes. But you're getting ready to regain your strength. Yes. Come to me. I'm going to get strength. Your head's going to lift up. Your shoulders finna square. You finna look in the face of your enemies and look in the face of those who have hurt you. And you won't go to with your head lifted up and your shoulders square. You give it to because God is renewing my strength. You finna be refreshed. When you come to the altar, you finna be revived. Oh my God. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Get ready to be restored. You're getting ready to be revived. Yes. Oh my God. God is getting ready to restore your animation. Yes. Yes. Oh my God. 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 Yes.
You said, what do you mean by an animation? Because animation means liveliness. You finna come back to life. You ain't finna be dead no more. You know, for walk around like you gotta live it in your mouth anymore. That pale look off your face finna lift up. You hear me say, God, your thoughts are restored. Your life is restored. You hear me say, God, when you used to praise God, they you used to make it hard, God, they you used to lift up Jesus. You hear me say, God, I'm restored. Your livelessness. Intermission means to take a break from. I'm giving you strength to take a break from that. You gotta take a break long enough to come to Jesus. He said, come to me, all you that are labor and are heavy laden and burning, and I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, that I am meek and I am lonely. He said, listen, you are part of the wrong yoke. Yeah. The, the yoke was, was a piece of wood that yoked up two oxes together. If they were worked to feel, it was a yoke. It had no pulling. It was pulling a load. It was pounding a hill. It was a part of a load. It was a part of a yoke. But sometimes we yoked up with the wrong people and the wrong things. We hear the sense God. But Jesus said, you call out to us, I'm going to bust that yoke. You hear me, says God. You need to be yoked up with Jesus. You need to be yoked up with the Son of God. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Take my yoke. Upon you, yoke is something that connected to animals. Jesus said, take my yoke and be connected to me. And once you get connected to me, he said, the burden is going to be lifted. Yes. And he said a yoke will be destroyed and that chain will be broken. In saints of God, some of us have not got yoked together with Jesus. He said, take my yoke upon you. He said, for my burden is easy, it screams, and my yoke, this Lord, is light. God said, you've been exhausted, exhausted, you've been tired, You've been laboring. God will have a tailor-made word for you when you come into his house. Yes. And it's like God is just sitting up talking, having conversations with you, telling you what you're going through. When you say, I'm tired and I am exhausted, I'm tired mentally, I'm tired spiritually, I'm tired emotionally, even in my body I'm tired. Yes. Because when we get tired in our spirit and our mind, our body feel it. And we said, why come it seem like I don't have the energy that I used to have no more? And the enemy is attacking you. And all the burdens that have been on you, he keep coming for more burdens. More burdens. More cares. Yes. More worries. And instead of you giving them to Jesus, you carry them. Yeah. Cast all your care upon me. He said, because I care for you. They may not care for you, but Jesus said, I care for you. Your family members might not care for you, but Jesus said, I care for you. People on your job might not care for you, but Jesus said, I care for you. Saints of God, standing your feet around the building. If you know that you've been having trouble in your mind. Come to the altar right now and give it to God.